Hey guys, Professor Bell, Comic Book University, and X-Men Blue, issue number 21. This is Poison X, part two. The first part was it. Well, you know, look in the description below. See the X-Men annual, the X-Men Blue annual. Anyway, so, okay. A lot happens in here. There's a lot of fighting. There's a whole lot of action, but there's also a little bit of storytelling in here. Just kind of, you know, snuck in. If you pay attention, you'll actually find it. Um, there's this dude that's been going around stealing Clintars from uh, the planet Clintar. Excuse me, that's the uh, the Venom symbiotes. So, uh, anyway, they go, all the symbiotes, they, he's going around collecting these things and whatnot. So the X-Men are trying to go after and find uh, Corsair, which is the time-displaced whatever. Corsair, um, he's the leader of the Star Jammers. He's Cyclops' father. That's the time-displaced thing. So, anyway, um, they are looking for them, but they're being tortured by th uh, Thriller Kill, which is... Uh, which is impressive. Thriller kill, killer thrill. Uh, anyway, her, that one, the crazy one. And uh, <laughs> so, so this dude's a weapons dealer. And meanwhile, there's these these symbiotes who are owned, who are actually a part of Killer Thrills uh, coterie, her 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 group. And there's just a lot of people all over the place. And these guys are on an alien planet trying to figure out what's what. Now, this is kind of interesting seeing Eddie Brock take a completely different look on things like Cullen Bunn writing Eddie Brock is very different from the uh the current uh Venom series that's going on right now like extremely different and I'm not saying it's bad but I almost feel like Cullen Bunn would be a lot better writing the Flash Thompson version of uh you know Agent Venom which is now Agent Anti-Venom I feel like he'd be better off writing him because that's what this really feels like like I have to keep reminding myself this is Eddie Brock this is not Flash Thompson Agent Venom would be perfect in this scenario, and I could believe better that it's him doing all of this stuff rather than having Eddie freaking Brock being the, the champion superhero in all of this, you know? The ultimate infiltrator, the tough guy who's actually able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with five other Clintars, and he's, he's curb-stomping people. I mean, come on, man. So it's, it's very different to see Eddie doing this as opposed to Flash. He's just so far out of his element but he's acting like he's not. Anyway, so um, the most important thing that happens in this comic, as far as I'm concerned, is that this guy who's going around stealing these Clintars, turns out he's been doing this for a long time, and he seems to be the one he at least knows something about, but he seems to be the one who actually got the Venom symbiote in the first place, the actual Venom symbiote that Brock is wearing and that it had escaped, and that's how it ended up over in the Secret War Battle World, the original one from back in, like, 85, whatever year that was. So, um, wow. Interesting. Now, this is cool, and I'm digging this, and this is a first little, you know, hurrah, hey, check this out, you know? I don't know that this story is going to pan out in these pages. Venomized, this is uh, uh, Poison X, the story arc, but Venomized... Uh, issue number one is going to be coming out pretty soon. Actually, it's going to be coming out in... It doesn't, it doesn't actually say when. I'm trying to look this up online. I don't see any place where it says online where it's coming out. But, like, looking this up, wow, interesting. So, I'm digging that. I am. Um, but, again, I feel like this should have been freaking... I feel like Spider-Man should have been involved in this in some way. But, more importantly, this should be a Flash Thompson story. Uh, you can have the X-Men in it also. You can have anybody you want in it. But, yeah... Anyway, um, this story, for right now, until it actually becomes Venomized, I'm hoping that we don't find out anything more about this guy and, um, you know, how he wound up getting the Venom symbiote in the first place. Because I know it's going to sound weird, I guess, but this feels like sacrilege to me, that we're finding out more about the Venom symbiote in the pages of the freaking X-Men, all right? It just seems so... It, it just, wow, like it's, like, like I said, it's like sacrilege to me, you know what I'm saying? This almost seems like it's breaking from, this belongs in the pages of the Venom comics, okay? I don't care if it's Eddie Brock, I don't care who it is who, who's running the, I don't care if it's Lee Price. This should happen in the pages of uh, Venom, not in the pages of the X-Men. Now, maybe we'll get more in the pages of uh, Venom, because we're going to be flipping back and forth between Venom and X-Men Blue, but... Yeah, this this actually felt a little bit dirty for some reason. And maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just completely being a total fanboy, geek out, nerd, whatever. I just, that's how I felt when I read that. I'm like, wow, this is an X-Men book. And we just found out something about Venom that is crucial to its storyline. Not cool. 
Anyway, guys, I'm going to give this comic book a B. This was fun. I enjoyed reading this. X-Men Blue deserves a B, whatever. But uh, this was this was good. I dug this. Again, just more crossover events in the pages of Blue. Can't we just... I want more Bloodstorm, man. I, there was no Bloodstorm in this. There was no um, uh, young man Logan in this, like like teenager. There was no Jimmy Hudson in this. There was nothing. You know what I'm saying? No, nothing from those two. Just the original X-Men, which is cool. But since you brought these other two guys in, I kind of want to see these guys in it. So it's, it's weird seeing this. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. Professor Bell Comic Book University. Class dismissed.